Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. Happy New Year! It is finally 2022. Hopefully this year is better than the last couple. I hope this year is getting off to a roaring start for you guys. In this episode, we are doing a great Gatsby themed piece for the new year. Hence why I'm in my roaring 20s garb. I'm a little uh, feather, got my little babu, got my little... It has tassels. Anyways, in this episode, I am going to be taking this awesome, authentic art deco piece and flipping it into, well, an even more art deco piece. You guys know I love my taping. I love designs. I love doing that art deco kind of geometric pattern. So we're gonna really delve into that with this design today. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get flipping. So this boy right here is an authentic 20s bar. Ooh, I should specify 1920s. Oh my God, we are officially in the 20s, guys. We're not officially, we've been in the 20s. Crazy. Anyways, so authentic Kirby Beard and Co. piece. And it is a little bar, as you can see, it opens up from the top and a big door on the front that reveals this awesome upright bar. You can just see this, like imagine it in its heyday, filled with liquor and, you know, maybe an ashtray, some drinks. It has these cool little cocktail spikes. So the first thing I did was I cleaned this piece off with a little vinegar and water mixture and then I went in with a wet cloth and just wiped all of the grease off. It actually had a lot of wax on it built up, maybe from a, a spilled melted candle or something, but I went ahead and cleaned that off too. And then after everything was all cleaned, I went in with a really cool gold design that I, you know, looked at some, some uh, authentic art deco inspo for online and uh, just kind of built off of that and kind of did my own thing. Um, this process took me probably about 10 hours to finish total. It was a very, very long process, which is why pretty much everything in this video is just going to be sped up like this because it took me an extremely long time and I didn't want to take longer than the already 34 minutes that it's taking for this video. Um, but yeah, I got really creative with how I did my shaping. I um, used plates, CDs, you know, obviously the tape that I just used, the, the lid for my gold paint I used to kind of get this circular shape for these shapes right here. So when you go in for this kind of art deco-y style or any pattern for that matter, just be creative. Use your imagination and, uh, you know, things will come out probably better than you can imagine. And I do have a few smudges that, you know, come up here and there, and I am going to show you guys how I fixed those smudges with a pretty creative solution, I think. Um, but yeah, that's, that's uh, for later. So I found this little plaque on the inside of the piece that said Kirby Beard & Co. Paris. 
And I, of course, being, you know, a furniture flipper and loving this type of stuff, I looked it up and honestly couldn't find much on the company. It was pretty slim when it came to information on it. I uh, looked up Kirby & Co. I looked up Beard & Co. I looked up Kirby Beard & Co. And um, the only information that I could really find on it was that it was a uh, company that was started initially in the 1700s and um, they focused on like glassware and metal plates, serving dishes, um, you know, cocktail shakers and that sort of stuff. And I was really curious because, you know, obviously this is a bar and so the cocktail shakers made sense, but uh, I couldn't find basically anything on furniture. There was one piece that I found that was furniture and it was this really, really, really cool uh, kind of table bar kind of cabinet thing. Um, and that's the closest thing that I found to this specific piece. I didn't find any single thing on this particular piece. Um, and I'm thinking that maybe they have to do with what's inside of like bars like this. Maybe they made like the cocktail shakers and the glasses and, you know, all of the mixing things, the little cocktail skewers and all that. Maybe they specialized in that and then I'm thinking teamed up with a furniture maker, maybe? I genuinely have no idea, but it does seem that throughout their history, they kind of switched what they focused on and moved toward, like, moved from glassware, metalware, all that sort of stuff into a more furniture, lamps, um, that sort of thing. Because I do find Kirby and Co., um, Kirby Beard and Co. Uh, lamps. I, I have been able to find that, like, but they're more modern. They're not from the same era as this specific cabinet. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool, unique find, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really pumped I, I found it. It was listed for $35, it had a tag on it, but I was able to talk the guy down to $25, which was pretty cool. And this pattern, um, I, I don't know why I choose to do this for fun. Like, I genuinely enjoy it when it's over like it's really cool and satisfying to do when i look back on it but in the middle of this process oh my god you should have hear heard heard me griping i was complaining and complaining to my boyfriend and uh yeah just wanted it to be over but um yeah it took me a really long time to do this so if you guys are preparing for something like this make sure you are in a comfortable position or wearing good shoes where it's going to support your back and you know your legs and all that sort of stuff your feet yeah just make sure you're you're comfy because you're going to be here for a while also, if any of you guys are interested, I will have the link to the specific tape that I used in the description below. It is a tape I got off of Amazon and it's kind of like a variety pack of different sized tapes. So it comes with that super thin one that you see here and then this kind of medium one. And then it has, I believe, two more sizes that I used for this specific piece and it helped so much like not having to cut down all of my tape and you know try to get it to be that exact size just yeah it really helped and made it a lot more fun to do the designs because I was able to do things that I would not have been able to do with regular size tape like this otherwise I would have to be going in and cutting every single piece of tape down to size and like using a ruler and a cutting um uh oh my god a uh, box cutter there we go a <laughs> box cutter and just cutting all of those down to size and it just would have taken that much longer so highly recommend using the variety pack sizes of tape again in the description below if you are interested
And as you can see here, the wild Miss Flips is using her dishware for a stencil-like procedure where she is trying to make a perfect circle. She will try, and she will succeed, but at what cost? At what cost? Nah, but as I said in the beginning, uh... Get get creative, you know? Circles are hard. Curves are hard. Especially if you're freehanding them. Um, so, yeah, do, do what you gotta do, man. I mean, yeah. Also, this piece had a lot of little tiny dings in it, as you can see on the bottom here. And honestly, I didn't really feel like I would have been able to get that magic sheen back that it has, like the original sheen, um, just because this piece was obviously so well made. It's like genuine wood. I, I'm pretty sure it's mahogany and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, I don't think I, I would have been able to, to get that back if I were to sand it down, restain it, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I just <laughs> didn't feel confident enough, and I made that artistic call just to to leave the, um, the scuffs and everything there and let them tell their story. Let the, the dings and scratches and everything show the life that this piece has been through and uh, the wear and tear and you know, all the love that it's gotten throughout its life.
So I was debating whether or not to do the exact same design on the other side that I did on the first side, and I decided, you know, it is very classic art deco to be very symmetrical, uh, very much perfect and linear, and I just decided to go with the same design to follow that kind of style. Um, it's a very hard thing to do when you are hand painting a design like this to make it exactly perfect and I thought that that was actually kind of a cool element to it. Um, obviously it's hand painted so there's you know going to be differences there are going to be imperfections and uh, differences from each side to another and so i decided to go with that and make things a little different purposefully like purposefully you know do some one line a little thinner than the other side and or like a little thicker and just make it have its own character but still carry the same general design as the um as the design on the other side so that they're different but the same kind of like your eyebrows And the design was actually kind of cool to do over. It was interesting to see like, you know, where I messed up last time, where I could do better, what I could make easier and uh, more efficiently. And this particular pattern was definitely something that I uh, could do more efficiently the second time around. I was able to, you know, do it all at once versus doing one line at a time kind of thing. And it was, yeah, a very interesting experience to do it all over again. Um, definitely makes me think that, you know, I should for sure draw out my designs before I do them instead of just kind of starting and going with the flow and seeing what happens. <laughs> um, I feel like planning ahead is definitely a lot easier when it comes to designs like this. Just a, uh, you know, pro tip.
So in order to get the hinges and the handles to be gold as well in order to match them, I didn't want to take them off in case the hinges were, you know, stuck in place because it is such an old piece. With old pieces, you want to really be careful when it comes to taking off the hinges or the doors or whatever the case may be because oftentimes when you put them back on, they'll never ever go back on the same way. That they were before. So I just decided to go in with some gold paint, make sure I got all parts of the hinge, and uh, use some tape to cover up the places that I didn't want to paint. And there was a, a some grime on the back that I actually missed, so I went in there and gave, gave it like a, you know, deep clean and just wiped everything down. I actually <laughs> forgot to clean the inside of this piece and only cleaned the outside. So uh, I did that real quick and then went in and started taping the inside. I was originally going to remove this piece of wood and either spray paint it or paint it a different color, that way I didn't have to waste tape, but I genuinely couldn't figure out how to get it off. I tried using my screwdriver and going in, I tried, you know, uh, just seeing if there was any screws that I could undo, but no, there was nothing on there. So I went ahead and painted the entire surface in a basilisk black by Melange Paint and this is from their one line so it's an all-in-one paint really good quality I love the colors that they have but this actually just ended up being the color that I used because I had it on hand i um, gonna be honest and straightforward with you um, I had basilisk black left over from a um, credenza piece that I did a couple weeks back and uh, yeah so I just decided to use it on this bad boy and it came out actually really cool and ended up being kind of an authentic art deco color if you look back at art deco designs this color of black is actually found in a lot of different art and designs and furniture um, from that era so yeah I wanted to do kind of the same star figure that I did on the top of the piece and do it on the base of the top part of the bar, which I thought would be really cool. So I, you know, started doing my thing and, uh, you know, halfway through, as usual, decided to do something completely different. So we're uh, struggling with tiny, tiny little tears. I honestly just put my thumbnail where I wanted the tape to rip and then ripped it from there. Um, but if you, you know, have a box cutter, that would probably uh, be be better. But, you, you know, I, I make do with, with what I got, which is a box cutter, but um, I, for whatever reason, didn't use it.
I know I say it every time I'm doing tape work, but oh my gosh, it is just, it never gets old. Watching tape being peeled off is literally one of my favorite things. Just seeing the shape come to life and, you know, seeing all those flat, smooth, perfect edges. Oh my god, I could watch this for days. This is why this is one of my favorite videos, honestly. It's, it's so entertaining to me. So for these little skewer guys, the ones that I got didn't fit into the little holes here. So I thought, you know, if someone ends up buying their own someday, they're probably gonna not be the same size. So I went ahead and screwed those holes just a little bit bigger so that um, whoever ends up buying this can fit whatever size skewers they want in there. And uh, I went ahead and started taking off these little tray guys so that I could paint them and get them all spruced up and pretty. Of course, I went ahead and cleaned them first. I don't know why none of the cleaning process was filmed. Um, I'm gonna have to take that up with my production team. <clears throat> Anyways, gold. Uh, great color. Okay, so I bought these little empty markers. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna try to put some mineral spirits inside of them so I can create my own little mineral spirit refillable pen. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's try it. So apparently you unscrew this and take off this little cap hole. Or maybe you don't do it like that. And then they come with this little squeezy tube guy. Luckily, I don't use mineral spirits that often, so it's just right kind of at the top here. Boom. And we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna, boom, put it in there. And you just do that until it's full, I guess. Hopefully, at the end here, we will have a marker that is able to touch up the uh, piece without having to sand or do anything completely det detrimental that will, you know, remove the whole entire design. Because that's like the last thing I want to do. I, I want to do my absolute best to keep as much of the design on there as possible. Let's give this a whirl, shall we? I'm literally a genius. This worked beautifully. I mean, granted, the, the point of the marker didn't stay perfectly sharp, so that kind of got in the way of me making like, you know, perfect lines. It kind of, you know, as a kid, when you just pressed too hard on your marker and it frayed out like a, like a horribly destroyed broom, uh, that's kind of what happened in time after a while of, of doing this. But honestly, it worked beautifully. I was able to get all of the little imperfections and smooth everything out and get it looking the way that I wanted it to look. And honestly, I'm pretty dang proud. Anyways, here it is.
So that's the piece. Let me tell you, I have a lot of favorite pieces, but this is like by far my actual favorite. I love this piece. I love the way it turned out. It is exactly my style. I love the gold and brown contrast and then the like kind of darkish blue that I put in the middle of it. It is just so, so pretty. I honestly am not sure what I'm gonna list it for yet. If you guys wanna stay posted and see how much I listed it for, make sure you go over to my Instagram page at the Miss Flips and check out my uh, Instagram story. I have like a little thing where I go and list all of my sales and I post it immediately as soon as I sell it. And then I also include how much I bought it for, how much I sold it for, and then how much profit I made on that. So make sure you head over there to see how much I made on this awesome piece. And if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flipping family and so that you can stay tuned for the next flip. We got some awesome challenges for you coming up in the new year. Me and a bunch of other YouTubers are always getting together to do more flips and challenges and if you guys want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments. I know I love watching this process. It is so satisfying to me. So if you guys like it too, make sure to let me know and I will make more content like this for you guys. I hope that you guys all had a safe and wonderful New Year's and I hope this year brings you so much joy and so many opportunities and exactly what you want. But yeah, stay flipping guys.